Hi, I'm Mark Tomlinson, the Performacologist, and performance is everywhere. I, like you, started in my career doing just perform. I was a performance tester, and I would you know, put together the requirements, plan a load test, put together a specific focus of this application must perform N transactions per second uh, with a response time of uh, 200 milliseconds, uh, at a load of X, Y, and Z with a system configured with no more than it, all of the specifics of a load test. And then I would focus on the code and focus on the systems and make sure that performance testing was done. And I was just a load tester. I was a performance tester for many, many years. And uh, the more I, my mind was totally in, uh, engrossed with performance uh, thinking, um, I found that even when I would get kind of burned out, I need to, need to take a break from being a load tester. And I'll imagine I can go somewhere in the world. I, I don't want to think about performance. I'm, I'm done. I just, want to, I just want to, you know, walk down the street, go to the gym and do some stuff. And I would start walking down the street and I would start analyzing. You see all these cars driving by in the street. And I'm like, well, how many cars per second are going by? And then... That's how I was like, that's, ah, that's performance. I'm still thinking before. And then, then I'm analyzing if, the, if all of the cars were in rush hour back to back in two lanes going each way for one city block, how many total number, what's the capacity for the number of vehicles in both lanes, two lanes each direction? And then it's like, how many cars per second could you get driving down that piece? What's the throughput? And I'm like, no, 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 that's performance. I, I want to take a break for performance. So I, I you know, performance is uh, I'm going to take a break. So I'm going to go uh, get some fish tacos. Um, and so I go in and I get some fish tacos. Of course, I order some fish tacos and I'm thinking I'm standing in line. That's a queue in line. Then I order my fish tacos and I'm waiting to receive them. Then, of course, I have to pay. So I have a credit card and I put it in the machine and then it ticks the, the how long does it take to go to the end? I'm like, it's a computer and how many requests per second in the payment system and all that, which is stuff I work on now. So I've got response time to the end user standing in line. I'm thinking it's performance, still performance. I'm stuck in performance, just trying to get fish tacos. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, I've got performance on the brain. And then I'm like, all right, I'm not going to think about this. I'm just take my fish tacos and I'm going to walk down to the gym and I have some fish tacos before I go to the gym. And I, and then I'm thinking, how long is it that I go to walk and each minute that goes by the temperature degrades in my nice fresh fish tacos so should I eat them now and then I'm studying the thermodynamics and the performance curve of the loss of heat energy you know so my fish tacos are getting cold and I'm still thinking about performance I'm like all right I'll just have my fish tacos while I'm walking and then I'll get to the gym and I go into the gym I'm like great I don't have to think about any performance things but of course I get on a treadmill and I got my watch that, you know, like connects to everything. And then now there's a computer on the treadmill and how many steps per second, steps per minute, how many faster are you going? What are the heart rate things? So I get all the monitors, all the gauges, all the metrics, and I'm analyzing my physical performance of myself and my health as well as on the treadmill walking and doing. So, and, and then I'm looking on the computer, the TV and the TV's connected to the internet and that's connected to my phone. And I'm like, I'm surrounded. There's no escaping a computer. There's no escaping the fact that for every computer that's connected to everything that's sitting in front of you right now, including your phone, performance is everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. And it's, it's become a pervasive thing in our lives in many ways, our lives depend on it, our economic lives, our cultural lives, our social lives, our, in, a, in far too many cases, our idea. Everything is dependent on these computers, inter interconnected computers. And if we shut the whole thing down, who knows what would happen? But at least performance is everywhere. And at least inside me, I can't stop thinking about performance. But I had been spending 10, 15 years, maybe now I'm almost 30 years, still being a performance tester where many of us still that same thing. You just focus and like this application must. So I'm like, I'm just a tester, but performance is everywhere. Performance is not just this test. Performance is all of the things interconnected. Um, it's all the other things in the world, right? Uh, 
that depend on these the performance. So why am I making sure, what is the real reason I need this website or this database or this server to perform quickly? It's to serve the greater good. It's to serve some end user, some customer. It's to help a, a company. It's supposed to help an organization that might be a government. It might be uh, the public, the general public. But there's always this greater and expanding understanding but how do how do I but I'm just a tester I'm just a load tester focused on my thing and I get rewarded so I wanted to talk about the fact that some of us we can be super performance testers or performance engineers in an expanded way but we might just be really why are we stuck being load testers right So wait just a minute, because if we're performance testers and Mark, you're telling me there's all these amazing different expansive kinds of things, but in my job, no one asked me to analyze fish tacos. No one asked me to analyze the interconnected other parts. I just stay focused on my code. Just be a performance tester and don't make a fuss about it. Um, and that's where I'm basically saying as a performance tester, that's exactly right. In our industry, uh, we focus as performance testers on a very lengthy process. If I really make it in the most granular, don't summarize at all, we do things like help define a test in a very focused way. We build that test with a very narrow scope and usually a very specific scope, building out the test. We obviously run the test uh, within the parameters as defined. So we build a lab, we build the scripts, we build the test data. Um, we're monitoring, of course, that test while it's running, and we're monitoring the things that we know are included, et cetera, et cetera. We're interpreting what we're monitoring. We're analyzing all of that data in real time as well as after every test we analyze the results. Then we find things in our analysis and we focus on what we find we're escalating those things, we're optimizing those things, we're tuning and optimizing. So optimizing the code or tuning the systems, the hardware. Obviously we're reporting on all of this to our management to make sure that they're happy with the focused, detailed, repetitive work. And then we master all of these things in our career. You become a, a master of all of that, right? And we focus and we drill down and we dig in on all of these things repeatedly. We just keep doing this test over and over again uh, to make sure performance regression, we don't introduce any bugs or bottlenecks uh, unexpectedly. But as a performance tester, this is what we do. We focus, we narrow, we, we keep things really, really specifically scoped in a very narrow process, a very detailed process process that once you look at all the work involved, it's going to take you, it's a full-time job. Like you don't have time to go analyzing the thermodynamics of a fish taco over time while you're analyzing also the traffic and the cars per second and the payment system and the treadmill. Like all of this other interconnected societal performance things, you're not paid to do that. You're paid to focus on your code. And so we focus, we drill down, we dig in, we find a needle in the haystack, we peel away the layers of an onion, we keep our focus on that process, we keep a focus on the tools we're using. Some of us become masters of these tools in amazing ways. Um, we focus on code because code and configuration, the actual applications we build, we can actually open defects and that's also a measure of a tester is, did you find bugs and can you open those things? By design, we focus our thinking to achieve those goals, find bugs, optimize the system, make sure we perform and make sure the load tests pass uh, and do that process over and over and over again. So we repeat all of that with increased pressure because once you get good at something, they want you to do more. So do more tests. Uh, make sure you keep a focus, find more bugs, and then we want you to do that faster. So some of us have had to compress our time frames. It, there's never enough time to test. And then they expect you to succeed at finding more and more bugs, et cetera, et cetera. Make it faster. Can you, we went 500 milliseconds. Can you make it 400 milliseconds? Now 300 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds. 
So you try to keep tuning and optimizing all those things over and over again. And the result of doing that for years and years is that you get a lot of positive reinforcement, right? We get rewarded for focusing the end of the sprint iteration. Each release goes into production and woo! We grow into our jobs. We make careers of what we're doing. We make money. We get promoted. We're like, this is great. Just like me, after like 10 years, I'm like, I am burnt out on performance. I just want to go to the gym and eat some fish tacos. And I had hit the wall just like anyone else, just like some of you that are like, I'm so tired of this application. I found every bottleneck there is to find. This system is really great, yet they, what else can I do? I'm stuck, I'm completely stuck. And so you burn out. You hit these limitations on really great performance testing, but it's the you hit this sort of stagnation where it's like, we keep running the same tests over and over again, and we tweak them and we expand them. Maybe there's new features and such, but I'm not finding any new bugs, you know? And we sort of, we've trained our developers to be good performance engineers. So as they're writing code, they don't make the same mistakes. We've identified a lot of anti-patterns. There's a lot of training, but isn't there more that I can do? I mean, can't, can I start asking questions? You know, what else are we missing? Is there something we can add to these tests that goes above and beyond a normal load test? And if we expand that awareness, like how can that actually help? Like who, am I helping a developer? It's like, well, I tested this thing I had an idea about, but it may or may not be relevant to the code. So how can we be more valuable to not just the developer, but the product owners, the business, and then our customers and then to their customers and expanding that to our societies, our communities. So if all of our customers are happy, then we're using technology in harmony with one another and we're doing it in an ecological way. You can just keep expanding and expanding and expanding the fact that there's performance aspects that improve every part of our lives. So expand your performance mind, right? I want you to take a minute and think, Maybe, maybe I should spend some time and I'm doing, it's funny, I'm doing the same thing as the guy. Uh, maybe I should expand how I define performance for myself. How do I turn a normal, boring performance test or a, a repeated performance test into something more spectacular, into something more expansive? And so the trick to everything in testing like anything else is questions. So as you're uh, considering performance questions, expanded performance questions, this is kind of the master list that I use, which is I ask myself, what do I know about this computer system? And then what, what don't I know? What do I know about the individuals that use this system? So what do my end users look like? What do my customers look like? And how do they use the system? And then what else might they do? Um, how does this system impact those end users? So in what way does a negative performance or a, a good performance impact them? And how does that app or so a performance impact the greater world around those end users? So let's Let's say, for instance, you're doing emergency work and you're making uh, emergency relief more successful. Um, if you're delivering vaccines uh, by ordering vaccines and delivering them through a logistics system, if we make that system work more smoothly, more effectively, efficiently, how does that impact the greater world? I'm delivering vaccines all over the world. Um, how does the system perform today is a great question. Um, in the present, how do things perform? And is it performing today better or worse than how did that same computer performance, uh, how did the computer perform in the, in the past? And how will that computer system operate in the future? So there's some questions that are sort of a narrow scope about our code. There's some questions that are about sort of the present and the past and the future. So there's some temporalized. These are kinds of the different expanded questions that I would encourage you to ask. And let me uh, share with you how I organize a very structured way. This is a practice, a structured way 
to asking performance questions. And it's the three questions that start with a narrow scope and then an individual scope and then asking about the world. So the very first set of performance questions are about the computers, the things we know. If our code depends on the performance of other systems, maybe it's even an internal library, a third-party library um, within that, what happens if the other system doesn't perform well? So if this computer performs very well, but it depends on a web service or a database service or a remote call, what happens if those other systems fail? And what if our computer system fails the other computer? Like they're interrelated. So you ask yourself questions about the dependencies and the interdependencies just of our code, our application, cooperating amongst all the other computer systems. And, and what happens to those other systems if our software fails? What are the impacts technically to those other computer systems? Not even thinking about uh, the impacts to, say, human beings and end users. So the first question you want to ask at Expanded is for my code, for the code that, ha that, that I'm working on, and ask yourself for this computer system, what, what happens if an interdependency or an intradependency between other services, what happens if there's a performance anomaly or a defect or a, a bottleneck? How do those other computer systems, can they queue? Do they fail? Do they throw exceptions? How am I impacting the closest neighbor to that performance piece, right? The second thing is to ask yourself as an individual. And you may ask uh, a, you, an end user, this is a perfect example here, could also be software that's used by your colleagues, an employee, um, or it's used by an end user, a customer. So what happens if the, this is very typical for performance testing, what is the end user impact? Uh, what is it, what's the impact to an individual human? And I want to stress something in this part here where we make this leap from if this is my computer, I take the first step to asking how does it impact end users in the human world? And I think a lot about uh, the point of sale, people standing in line waiting to make a pay for something at the point of sale. And that queue gets longer and longer. They get frustrated. They don't have time. They're in a rush. They have to get somewhere. They need to get their fish tacos and go to the gym. But the idea is that just queuing in line can be frustrating, and that's an impact to the human society. Let's imagine there's computers everywhere in everything, and they all perform terribly. You may be make it a... Human beings are going to... It's a form of suffering to be honest with you, and we're all as an industry responsible for that. So what's interesting is you just start asking questions about these individuals from what I understand, how does it impact me? How does it impact another human being on an individual basis? And that's my first step to go from the computer to an individual impact, customers, end users, colleagues, uh, family members, friends. Uh, how does it impact the people I know personally, as individuals. And then the next step is asking about the greater world and progress from individuals to groups of individuals. So a community, um, how does this per system performance affect the collective world around me? Um, uh, the people that depend on this software, they could be working in the field, they could be doing uh, humanitarian work, they could be in the military, they could be working in business, they could be traders in finance world. Um, and does it cause harm if this, if this software performs badly, uh, if it performs in an unethical manner, does it cause some kind of harm? Hey, we built our entire society around this particular software. What if it fails? Does it have an undue stress on the current life systems? Um, yeah, we got this great computer in our village, but it uses all of the power from an entire day of solar capture just so we could surf the internet. That's not really, that's not bringing good things um, to that. So is it exploited? What happens to the world if this software fails uh, in a big, big way? And, you know, we've, we've covered a lot of things in the years uh, about um, like healthcare systems from governments, governmental systems that essential public services and the systems completely crash, 
that has tremendous harm um, to uh, to those kind to to society. So it's very interesting to expand your performance questions. So take these first three. The first three steps are: How can I expand my understanding technically about the computer systems? How can I see how those computer systems? Impact individuals, very common end user experience, response time, how many users, customers, colleagues, and then go one step further, the world, a collective impact. So what I did then is I took those three and I put them in a worksheet. And the worksheet looks like this. An expanded performance worksheet. At the top, you would put, here's my performance test objective, let's say for response time. And we've got the three categories on the left. Um, let me see if I can get there. So what you're going to write on the left side is what you know right now. So what do you know about the computer that you're, the software, the, the computer system or the app that you're testing? What's your current understanding of end users, individuals? And I know we've got 200 users and they, uh, they expect two second response time, their customer service reps, something like that. You're going to try to describe everything you know about your current understanding. And then what's the understanding of what those people do and what the computer system does in the greater world? So you've got all three levels on the left side, and those should be statements of fact, or at least your understanding. Um, they're not questions. And then on the right side, you write about what you don't know. And you challenge yourself to say, well, I know this about the computer, but I'm curious about these other things that I don't have answers about. And it's an exercise in the worksheet to go from the left to the right, from what you know to what you don't know, and expand with questions how that works. So let me let me walk through this um, so you can see. I'm going to oh, let me turn that off. In example number one, uh, I have response time goals. The account info web service must be 250 milliseconds average response time. Okay, now that's a perfectly straightforward uh, 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 performance goal. And so on the left, I write down things that I know about the computer. While I know the computer uh, has a lots of dependency on database calls, has a very nasty join, I've seen that. There's a lot of network latency with these chatty database calls. So back and forth, I'm spending a lot of time on the wire on the network. And then on the client side, I have mobile client apps that are distributed at large events. So, huh, that's interesting, large events. I'm already thinking, what? who's at these large, so the minute I ask who, who's at these large events? Well, they're salespeople that need the account information to respond to customers' questions and get them signed up, um, and they get discounts. So, customers at this event are on mobile apps, so salespeople on mobile client apps, they get frustrated, they can't sign up and get discounts. Um, I've, that's kind of what, why we're testing and I've, I know that that's kind of the customer end user context. And then I think about the greater world, why is this urgent for my company? Well, if we don't have happy customers, if uh, our company can grow and prosper if, if we have happy customers. Well, it helps our people to sign up for these trials and discounts um, you know, in an efficient manner so that they can become happy customers. Um, and, you know, who knows what this customer does? We're selling something, maybe it's a fantastic piece. So now I have some, those are the things I know about my current, it's very common to say, well, what are you testing today, Mark? Well, I'm testing this application for account information and salespeople need, so that's my very basic understanding. Those are the facts. Now, the things I don't know are things I haven't tested for or I haven't really, I'm curious about. So one would be, I know there's a lot of dependency in these database calls, but what if I put a bunch of heavy load on there, am I gonna blow out the connection pools? Again, on the right-hand side, the questions uh, that you see are going to be computers. What do I not know and what am I curious about to expand the understanding of the computers and the software? So what about poor indexing? Maybe we have some poor indexing, and I know there's this nasty join. If I have a bad index in there, then those joins are also gonna be slow, huh? That's a concern. And then responding to the clients, well, I don't know much about them, but I do know they're on mobile apps, so 
What protocol are they using? Are they hybrid apps? I mean, what kind of route? Where are these events happening and how do they get to the back end system? What, what kind of routing? Do they go over Wi Fi? Do they go over LTE? So, what kind of protocols are they using to do that? So, those are just some expanding questions. Again, they're technical questions. Uh, they're close, very close, that first level, close to the computer. And then I expand then the individual. So let me ask more about the customers and the end users. Maybe a subset of the info could be delivered faster. So instead of uh, one way we could speed things up if the database is going to be slow is we don't wait for all the account information to go back. Maybe I'm curious, could we deliver some of that uh, to the end customer faster? And could the individual be successful with just a subset of the data? Interesting question. I'm curious about that. Um, maybe we get the account information once to sign someone up, and then we cache that information on the mobile device for, say, a day um, so that when they get discounts, so you could say, oh, you went to this booth and that booth and that booth at the event, you get a discount, get a discount. We don't have to keep looking up the account info. So maybe we could cache the, the data somewhere along the way. Um, and then I'm asking really about what happens to those individuals. Like if they don't get a discount, obviously they're probably paying full price, but there may be even more burden. Like they call, they complain to the salesperson, then the salesperson opens up a tech support ticket. There's a huge event. And then the tech support person, there's only four of them. They're getting harassed because they're like, all these people want discounts. And can you go in the back end of the system and put their discount in because they missed out and they didn't sign up? So maybe there's a lot more pain to the salespeople, the tech support people, just to try to support. Them. Maybe this little bug is causing actually a lot of human pain, not just to the end users, but to everyone else trying to make that happen. And it's like, huh, I wonder what happens. Just by asking what happens is pretty cool. Um, and then I think about the greater cost to the company. If things are going poorly, obviously we're not gonna grow, but if we can grow, let's say that we have a more efficient way of doing this. We tune the application, it uses fewer resources, and uh, we can actually bring that product to market in a much more ecological way. That's good, it's good for us to grow because maybe we, we do good work and that's really nice. Um, if the discounts are insignificant, meaning another thing is like, what's the impact to savings to people? If we're putting them through a lot of pain for not much of a discount, that may be perceived as harassment. Our reputation might not be so good. People won't wait around. They're not really going to sign up again, etc. So maybe there's a greater impact to our industry. Oh, there's another one of those companies trying to do X, Y, and Z. Well, all of the companies like us maybe have that reputation. So this is a brief example of sort of a worksheet I use, again, I do the facts on the left and I do uh, continued uh, work on the right. So the next thing I want to tell you is that you can take those uh, that worksheet about from the computer to the individual to the greater world and use that worksheet just as a mental exercise. And we'll talk about that. Um, there's another way that you can mix in other expansive questions that have to do with time, meaning not response time, but temporal time. And that is sort of temporal questions, expanded temporal questions. Very simply, you can ask questions in a very general way. What do we know about the present in terms of our load testing, in terms of our performance testing goals? Are we confident we understand the current performance test? Do we need more validating test runs? Do we, do we need to start exploring other test runs, like how well does the system perform today? And then the present and the past and the future are your three areas. So taking these three areas as well, we can ask questions and be curious about, huh, how does that system perform last year or the year before, previous runs? What's the worst performance ever observed in the history of this software? Is it running really great? compared to two years ago, or, you know, is it really still crappy? Um, and do you have some awareness from your own past about other systems that are like, oh, I, I can apply my contextual understanding from the past to ask more questions and be more curious about 
hmm, what what should we be telling? And then you can ask questions about the future. So understanding the past, present, and future helps you to expand your idea of the effort of doing performance testing. So let's do a worksheet on throughput goals that take the present, the past, and the future. And again, we have expanded questions. In this case, our testing goal that the ticket purchases must handle 1,500 transactions per second or per minute. And so the current app uh, that I know in the current present, we know the app is limited by the number of threads and memory. We've been told this, we've observed this, we've measured it. That's where we are currently. We can scale up the number of threads, uh, but it prob we know it exhausts the database connection pool at some point because we'll, with more threads, you need more connections and we have a limit on that. And then scaling out to more web servers also gives us more connections, but then that overloads the database because we've, we've basically scaled out the system. So we're trying to figure out how to get more throughput with scale up and scale out. Well, really, maybe our bottleneck is really on the database. Um, in the past, asked some similar questions. Well, if we're trying to hit 1,500 transactions, last year we sold only 600 tickets at a peak. So it's like, huh, all right. We know that. We know what they did last year. Um, in that peak hour last year, we actually had the person I interviewed or talked to said we had issues with database connections. So at 600 tickets per minute, there were already database connection issues. So it sounds like we're still dealing with the same issue. And last year, and actually for the last three years, we just ran four web servers. Like we hadn't really changed the configuration of how we're running this stuff. So that's what happened the year before. And then we're standing here with this knowledge of the past. We're standing here, we know the present, and we're up against the future. And knowing that it was 600, it's more than 2x. And sales and promotion have a budget to just push twice the number of customers to buy tickets. And so we have at least 2x in the promotional campaign. So that's why we're thinking we really need to handle at least 1,200, probably 1,500 transactions per minute. And then we're estimated then because of those campaigns to receive 1,500 a minute. So again, on the left-hand side, present, past, future, these are the things I know. And then I expand those questions. I say, all right, what would I ask curiously about what I know about the present? Well, if we increase the connection pools, what happened? Could it scale up? Do we run out of CPU? Do we push over the database? And what's the total number of connections across those four web servers? What's the total number of connections per minute? What can it handle with that throughput? Um, and is there a limit for some reason on the number of web app servers? It could be licensing. It could be uh, some kind of other uh, constraint of something. So are, do, we have, do I have a good grasp on what those constraints are and... We obviously have a data, I wanna ask questions about opening up the database connection pool and maybe scaling out, see what happens there. With regards to the past, I can ask questions that's, hey, last year, why did we only hit 600 a minute? Did, did we really just not advertise the campaigns enough to, to sell the tickets or maybe the event venue or something like that was too small? and it really, you didn't sell that many tickets, or maybe our install base was very small. Um, what, what, what are those current limits different from last year to this year? Like, did something change? Oh, well, we acquired another company and now we're gonna double the size of the event. Okay, great. Um, those are not just goals, these are actual customers, et cetera, et cetera. And do we have a plan to double the number of web servers already? Like, if we're gonna double the number of throughput, should we go from four to eight servers? You just start asking questions about compared to the past. Hey, if we had two X load and I know this about the past, I'm curious about, you know, did anyone do the homework and figure that out? And then of course, for the future, be like, if we're testing today to get from 600 to 1200, 1500 a minute, Hey, I'm going to set up all these, this, let's just see if we could get to 3000. Could we go to two X of our current goal? which is 4X, and what would prevent us from hitting that? Would it be database connection limits again? Could it be the number of web servers, CPU? Could it be physical resources? 
So again, these questions are another way to sort of jog your mind into reflecting on the past, asking questions about the future, taking what you know from the present and kind of putting the whole picture together. Again, asking questions and leading questions uh, to do that. Of course, I will tell you, you can combine these things. Um, sorry, I got a bit. You can combine these things into expanded hybrid questions. And so sometimes this can get very complex and confusing. But for me, in my mind, usually when I'm asking at the, the very near, the lower computer level, I'm usually asking about the present. Uh, so how is the current host doing? What are the resources CPU? We start our journey in performance analysis on that uh, computer, the present computer, and it's the lowest level and it's the current time. And that's usually a, a good starting point. And then you would expand to say, how does this impact end users from what we know about the past? So, so you could do individual future, you could be computer past. So computer present, and how did that impact the, in the past if we don't even know anything, what the computers were like two, three years ago? What do people know about customers, end user complaints, business uh, problems, etc.? So you're asking at the little wider scope about the past. And then you might say, look, what's happening in the global sense for the future? Oh, the business is growing. Our market has changed. The, the competitor landscape in the industry has changed. We've adopted AI. This is changing. So we take a more global view of the future. So that's a very common way that I would combine the hybrid of computer present, individual past, global future. And that can look something like this. Um, so this would be just like you would normally take a load test that's doing resource utilization. The web and app servers must operate between 85 and 95% CPU. App and memory must be no less than 80% of the host capacity. So very interestingly, um, that's uh, take, and I'll, I'll, you can take a screenshot, you can get the slides of this. Um, but this would be computer present, lots of DB calls, a nasty join again, network latency, mobile claps. Are, we're taking parts of that computer from the first one. Individual pass, DBA staff has a whole different team last year. Last people, uh, last year people did complain when the app was slow. I had to work 18 hours straight provisioning the VMs. Ah, my global future, we will have two more event locations next year and we do have a green computing initiative. Whoa, I'm thinking globally, I'm thinking about the impact of what we're doing and then the initiative, there's some interesting things happening. And then of course you start asking expanded questions in each of those ways. Poor indexing, will those join slow? Response to the clients, very similar questions, but you can start asking them in different ways. Um, just to give you an example of, of what that looks like. Um, all right, so as we go into expanded performance thinking, um, think about that worksheet. I can You can take a blank copy of that worksheet. I can send that to you uh, separately, which would be kind of swell. But let me bring this home a little bit just to just to talk about uh, expanded performance performance thinking. Um, you can do this uh, as a mental exercise. So as a team, you could get together and do some brainstorming. Just generate those questions on post-it notes. Um, you can uh, uh, let me make sure I'm up there. Uh, generate those questions as a team. You could take a break, do some brainstorming. You could revisit an old load test or an existing test and expand that test, ask other questions. Uh, work backwards from the global future. So you could say, here's the big picture and let's work backwards from the big picture down to an individual computer, individual or computer level um, uh, and get to the present from the future. So you could do interesting exercises mentally um, and uh, it's a great way to exercise your brain. Of course, something I do is actually do this as an applied technique. So I will choose a worksheet type that's computer, individual. If I'm talking to usually business stakeholders, if I'm talking to product owners, I will use computers, individuals, and the world. If I'm talking to engineers, if I'm talking to techie, hardware, infrastructure people, I will do present, past and future as my worksheet. 
Um, and then I will generate at least three expanded questions or ideas for each of those. So a total of nine. Uh, and start those as talking points, as brainstorming points. And that's actually something I would do as part of the test planning process. Reviewing those questions with the stakeholders, you start, you never know, sometimes you ask that question, oh, I never really thought about that. That's a great question, thank you. Um, you can in then enhance and expand your test plan accordingly. Um, the real benefit of this that I'm finding uh, as a technique, as a way of doing stuff, is m generating a lot of interactive conversation uh, and uh, thought-provoking conversation. Um, so you increase your organic knowledge about the systems, usually having conversations about the computers, um, improving the awareness of how the system operates in the world. So you're talking about people using your software, so you're understanding the end user customer context, and that is really, really beneficial. You're also having an, a good alignment to the effort and the value uh, to conduct that testing. So if we're going to invest in building a really huge load test, what, what are we proving to ourselves? In a greater scope, there may be more value there. Obviously, there's the mental satisfaction, the self-satisfaction of reduced burnout. So if you, if you take a break from working the load testing grind and you do some brainstorming, that can be very refreshing mentally and emotionally. And I think that's really, really good. You end up having more valuable tests, just generally. Your testing efforts will, will find more interesting things and expand the test coverage, which is very hard to do in performance. Um, I think you also then apply that knowledge over time, so you will have faster analysis, you'll have uh, interdependent components and impacts at the ready in your mind, and you'll be able to do stuff uh, faster. Obviously, there's a few pitfalls, um, and we don't want you to fall in the pitfalls with this. One thing is if you're going to spend time away from working the load testing grind that you're successful, you guys are great testers, uh, if you have no management support for go and think about stuff, you'll get quite, why are you doing that? Ah, that's not testing. Are you finding bugs? We've all worked the grind. No, we don't have time to just stop and expand our thinking. Just focus, dig, get it. So if you're really working in, in a team or a shop that's keep, keep your focus on, you may need to do this kind of work outside of work, at lunchtime, brown bag sessions, sometime when they can't stop you from using your brain. Uh, and so those are the pitfalls you want to know if your management and your stakeholders are supportive of you spending the time expanding your thinking. Um, you might have somebody who gets nervous just by asking bigger questions. When you're asking about the future and you're asking about the big picture, global view, um, some people might not want you to go asking big, don't ask a lot of questions about that stuff. It could be something unethical is happening. I hope that's not the case um, uh, or something that's exploitative. But some people also just get very nervous talking about the unknown, talking about the future. So be prepared when you're generating big thinking, big ideas that some people may have a sense of anxiety and you need to be respectful of that uh, to your colleagues, but also to your management. Leadership might, might want to squelch what you're doing. Uh, or stop you from, from doing that. The other thing I would say is if you don't have buy-in and stakeholder support, you have to find a sponsor, some leadership or somewhere to say, yes, we want the performance testing team to spend time doing this work. It's really, really valuable. Um, and, uh, and with that, I bring you now into the summary um, everyone, I'll remind you, everyone can expand and improve performance testing. Expanding performance test coverage is really, really hard to do. It's really important uh, that you spend time doing it. Um, and I'll put myself down there. Using this structure, the worksheets, take a blank worksheet, set them up, draw them up however you want. Using the computer, the individual, and the global or world perspectives for questions or the present past future model, use that structure to help learn how to work your brain through the process. Um, and experiment at first as a brainstorming exercise. Even if you, nothing comes out of it, start practicing spending your time thinking, pull your head out of Load Runner, pull your head out of the load testing tool, pull it out of the monitoring tool, 
and go think about the bigger world. Think about customers. Think about uh, how ecological your application is. It, does it chew a lot of CPU? Does it burn a lot of energy? Does it create a lot of heat? Ask those kinds of questions. And then I, I can't give you a, a more of a tip to say get support or find a sponsor for expanding the performance testing practices at your company. Um, and with that, I will say thank you. Um, my name is Mark Tomlinson. I want to say thanks very much to the uh, Abstracta folks and everyone that's there. Thank you for being at QSConf, uh, which is really, really fantastic. Um, you can follow me at the Performacology website. Uh, it's on YouTube or it's on GitHub. You can go to performacology.com and check it out. Uh, I do have some office hours, so if you want to hook up and do some Calendly office hours, I'm happy to do that, uh, and that would be really, really swell. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference, and have a fantastic, fantastic day. Ciao.